Chapter 14, 75% of nothing. The lunch, no lunch recess. It was the only thing Greg really hated about sixth grade. After the kids finished eating, they had to dump their trays, sit back down, and wait for the bell. No walking around, no loud talking, and Mr. Percy, the custodian, was always there, leaning on his mop handle, watching. It reminded Greg of mealtime in an old prison movie. Mr. Percy was like the guard, always edging until the last prisoner, or always edging until the prisoners were locked up in their cells again, Expect, except the convicts got to go out into the exercise yard every afternoon, and the sixth graders didn't. Greg had done something since, had done something, some thinking since third period, and he decided he would ought to say something to Mara about her drawings. He hadn't actually lied to her in the hallway after social studies, but he had come close and he remembered that hurt look she gave him as he show, shoved her pictures back in her face. Yes, Mara was annoying, and she was a copycat, and he was glad Mrs. Davenport had fixed it, so he was going to see even less of her every day. Still, she had gone out of her way to ask his opinion about her drawings, and her excitement about comic books seemed real, so why not tell her the truth about her artwork? It was the least he could do. And besides, it wouldn't cost him anything. Now that he couldn't sell comics at school, Greg knew that if he went over and tried to talk to Mara at her table, he'd be surrounded by girls. No way he could say what he wanted to with an audience like that. Plus, with Mrs. Davenport's orders to keep away from Mara, he didn't dare just walk up to her. So he ate fast and watched carefully, and when Mara got up to take her tray to the drop-off window, Greg made his move. His timing had to be perfect. It was, but Mara saw him coming. As Greg slipped into the short line behind her, he saw her shoulders stiffen, so he talked fast, his voice low. That thing in the office went okay, don't you think? I mean, it stinks not being able to sell comics anymore, but at least we didn't get in trouble. Not even a detention. Pretty good, huh? Mara didn't turn, didn't nod, didn't react. Nothing. So Greg took a deep breath and said, Listen, I didn't mean what I said after social studies when Eileen and Brittany came up. But you heard what they said, and it just, just what, Mara hissed. Still keeping her back to him. Did the big, mean girl scare you? You could have said something like, we're just talking, you know, because you only made everything look worse, which is just what they wanted. Besides, who's stupid enough to even care what those two think? Oh, I forgot, you are. If Mara wanted to trade insults, she was messing with the wrong guy. Oh yeah, Greg said. Well, you're... I'm what, Mara whipped around so fast that the empty milk carton flew off her tray. Greg had words. He could have hit her hard, but that wasn't what he wanted. He took a breath. Again, Mara demanded. I'm what? You're... You're right, Greg said. What I did was stupid, and what I said was stupid, so I'm sorry. Then he bent down, picked up her milk carton, and tossed it into the recycling barrel along with his own. Oh, Mara said. She was surprised he'd apologized, and also that he picked up her trash. She said, um, thanks, and then slid her tray onto the conveyor belt. Greg said, you're welcome, and then he dumped his tray too. With his hands empty, Greg felt suddenly awkward. He missed having his red pencil case to hang on to. He stuffed his hands into his pockets he said, so, do you want to know what I was thinking this morning? About your drawings? Before all that? Mara said, yeah, but only if you were going to say something good. And she turned and walked towards the crowd of kids at the dessert table. Greg followed her, glad that the noise and talking in the cafeteria seemed to be getting a little louder. The sound was a, like camouflage. He ended up next to Mara and said, if you only want to know what was good, your drawings won't ever get better. She turned her head. Some of it was good. Really. Greg looked into her face to see if she was kidding. Her eyes didn't lie. Mara actually had no idea how brilliant her pictures were. And it struck him that this might be the first time that he ever looked into Mara's face when they hadn't been yelling at each other. He turned his face forward and took a step closer to the dessert table. Choosing his words carefully, he said, I don't want you to get all conceited or anything because your pictures, well, they're good. Maybe it's just beginner's luck or something, but I don't think so because you got it. 
the whole idea of how pictures work in comics. The timing of the panels and the scene. You just nailed it. Greg sneaked a sideways look at Mara. Her cheeks, usually pale next to her blonde hair, was flushed with color. She was smiling slightly, trying not to, but smiling. He said, there's more. Ready? Mara angled her face his way, but wouldn't look him in the face. She nodded. He said, okay. Some problems. You know what scale is in a drawing? Mara nodded, and Greg said, so tell me. She said, it's when you make sure things look like they're the right size compared to the other things. Like if a unicorn looks like it's actually bigger than a tree, then the scale is messed up. Greg said, right, so in a couple of your panels, the scale was wrong, but only in a few. The truth is, they're amazing, just incredible. With something in her voice that sounded like fear, Mara said, you're not just saying this, right? Greg shook his head and said no. Then he said, I mean, I'm not some big expert or anything, but I've seen a lot of comics, and I think your pictures are really good. Really. Without even looking Mara in the face, he could tell how much those words meant to her. And it seemed like she actually cared about his opinion. It was scary to feel how much power that he, that gave him. And suddenly Greg felt kind of responsible, like he wanted to help her. It was an entirely new feeling. Greg didn't let himself get carried away. His business mind kicked in and in a flash he saw a way to be a sort to be sort of helpful and also possibly to make a little money so he said how'd you like to make your whole unicorn story over into a comic book and then print some copies and then try to sell them not at school but there are other places if you want i could help and your comic could be one of the chunky comics and if any of them sell you could even make some money share in profits and if you come up with more story ideas, you can make more and try to sell them. What do you think? It seemed like a decent idea to Greg and a very generous offer. Without missing a beat, Mara said, how much money would I get? 40% of the profits on every copy sold, just on your comics, not mine. Greg added, again feeling generous. Mara shook her head, 75% for my own comics. And don't and you don't get to tell me what my story should be about or anything. They both took a step closer to the dessert table. 50% said Greg, and he thought, she's the bossiest, most annoying, most. 75% Mara said, or else I'll just go ahead and figure out how to do it all myself. Everything he did, uh, everything he did not like about Mara came crashing back into his mind, and Greg was tempted to shout, fine. Go ahead and do it all yourself, you stupid, stubborn lump. But he wasn't going to give her the satisfaction of seeing him get angry. Besides, they were going to sell they weren't going to sell many copies now. Maybe none at all, and seventy five percent of nothing is nothing. So Greg said, Deal, seventy five percent. But you have to buy me an ice cream sandwich right now. Mara stepped up, laid four quarters on the dessert table, reached into the freezer, grabbed two ice cream sandwiches, and slapped one of them into Greg's hand. She looked him in the eye, cracked um, half a smile, and said, deal. Three minutes later, as Greg sat at the regular table enjoying the last gooey bits of his free ice cream sandwich, the speakers crackled and the PA chime sounded. Silence settled over the cafeteria as Mrs. Davenport began to speak. Again, Greg thought of a prison movie. It was time for a few words from the warden. Good afternoon, boys and girls, and good afternoon to all the teachers and staff. I'm sorry to interrupt class this way, but I have an important all-school announcement. Some of our students have been making small comic books and bringing them to school. I have looked at some of these, and they are not the sort of thing we want here at Ashworth Intermediate School. So I have learned that some stu also I have learned that some students have been selling these little comic books to their friends right here at school. Even if these comics were appropriate, and they are not, even then, no one would ever be permitted to sell them at school. Our town school committee has a strict policy about this, so please listen carefully. Starting right now, all, um, starting right now, I want all students and all teachers to understand that these little comic books may not be brought to school, they may not be created at school, and they may certainly not be sold at school. Thank you all for your cooperation and have a productive afternoon. The chocolate wafers were Greg's favorite part of an ice cream sandwich, and as he chewed the last sticky bits 
from his left thumb, he thought, so that's it? The warden has spoken. Chunky Comics is now officially dead. And suddenly Greg was surprised, startled, and almost shocked. Not that Chunky Comics was dead. He'd known that that was going to happen. He was amazed. What amazed him was that he wasn't more upset about it. Because only yesterday he'd been shouting in Mara's face, all set to go cro Magnon on her because she was cutting into his profits. And today his whole comic book empire was crushed. All that money was swirling down the drain that he was doing. And what was he doing about it? Eating ice cream. And Greg thought, what's wrong with me? I should be furious. I should be pounding on this table shouting, unfair, unfair, unfair. Greg didn't have a chance to think more deeply about this because at that moment the bell rang. Everyone stood up. Mr. Percy began barking orders and the inmates at Ashworth Intermediate Security Facility started trudging back into their cells. After math class on the Friday afternoon, Greg rushed out and went straight to the art room. He needed every possible minute to work on his wire sculpture. Mara took her time leaving room 27. As she got to the door, Mr. Z called, Mara, a quick word, please? She turned around, made her way through the other kids, and walked over to stand in front of his desk. Mr. Z started slowly. I just wanted to say that I feel like what happened yesterday between you and Greg was partly my fault. When Greg started yelling, I should have pulled him right out into the hallway. Then all that mess would have, wouldn't have happened, and you wouldn't have been called to the principal's office today, or been switched out of my class. Or, by the way... Um, and by the way, that was not my idea, so I wanted to say I'm sorry, and I feel like I've turned you two um, into worse enemies than ever. Mara shook her head and said, it's okay, really, things are better now. I mean, it's not like Greg and I are friends or anything, but we're sort of in a business. We've got a deal and everything. I'm going to make comic books for Greg's companies. company. Mr. Z's dark eyebrows went up. Greg's company? Well, that's good news. Great. He smiled. And didn't, seem to, and didn't seem to know what to say next. So, Mara said, can I go now? I can't be late for language arts again. Of course, Mr. Z nodded. Go right ahead. And, and have a good weekend. You too, Mr. Z. After Mara was already out the door, Mr. Z called. And if you two want any advice, I know some economics and accounting business stuff. Mara called back. Thanks. Earlier during lunchtime, Mara had listened to the announcement from the principal, and she heard the same words Greg had heard. But for her, Chunky Comics wasn't dead. It was just coming to life. She intended to make Greg, Greg keep his word. He was going to help her turn the lost unicorn into a real comic book, whether he actually wanted to or not, and Mara couldn't wait to get started.